Now I'm doing a video here on sapphire colors and really what is a royal blue, what is a cornflower blue and some sapphires in between. So I'm going to start off on the end spectrum on a stone which has got incredible color. It's this one here. I would say it's almost slightly too dark for royal blue. It's almost a combination between royal and vivid. This is 10 carats, but it actually is a large stone. It's got a surface area of a stone, much more like a 14 carat sapphire. You can sort of see the, the flicks of blue as it comes through this stone. This is a beautiful sapphire. It's one of my favorite stones. It's just got incredible color. And when you see this in fluorescent light, it really just pops. Now I'll show you this in comparison to something which I would call more on the royal blue side. Again, this is another 10 carat sapphire. You see the difference in size. This is another thing you want to watch for in sapphires. People sometimes get caught up with carat weight, but it's also remembering to look at the size of the stone. Sapphires are extremely dense. and Unlike diamonds, each stone has a unique cut depending on how that stone forms. So there's no real true cut to a sapphire. It's always a, a mixed cut. But on a stone like here, which is 10 carats, and you've got another one here, which is 10 carats, you can see the difference in size. Now the halo on this one here is slightly bigger on the diamonds to help compensate that. But this one here on the right is more like a 14 carat sapphire. But this one here is exceptional because of the clarity. It's got incredible clarity. And it does have a slight undertone of violet, which you do see from Ceylon sapphires. But both of these sapphires on the GA reports have the origin of Sri Lanka. And incredible stones. This one being probably my favorite, even though it's a darker tone. And I think the saturation on this one is what I really, really like. So I would call this one sort of a dark roll to vivid blue and this one on a royal blue here as you can see it's slightly lighter and you can see as you look through into the stone but this is still my favorite stone so i'll put these two away and bring out something slightly smaller this is a 3.6 carat oval car it's also an untreated stone it's a natural scene on sapphire and this is a good royal blue sapphire. It's a combination of strong tone with saturation, not as strong as the tone, but still good. And you can sort of see the flecks of blue coming through there. Now, when I compare this to what I would call a cornflower blue, which is here, now, I have seen YouTube videos where people describe the darker the color, um, the more gray it becomes, which is actually not true. For sapphire to have grain, it actually has to go extremely light. It has to go below a three on the GI scale. Scale. You can't get dark blue sapphire with gray in it. It's just not possible. And if you look at the color wheel, the darker the tone and the darker the saturation, the stronger the blue until it pretty much becomes black. But once you start going, like this one here, I think on the left here, the 5.4, once you start going below a 5.4 is when you start sort of getting into the grayish blues. Even though you might not see gray in it, it's just how the grading's done. And the sort of the color wheel we have on our website helps explain it under the GA color grading scale. But this stone here on the right is a raw blue, and the one on the left is a cornflower blue. And cornflower blues are good because they just look excellent in natural light as well as fluorescent light and this stone here is an exceptional cut it's really well faceted all the way through put this one away for now I'll show you this one here a little bit more it's just really well cut below and those facets all help create this incredible saturation on this stone now this hard cut sapphire is also another untreated sapphire and these both actually share the same color grade as b54 but you can see how the difference the color is 
on this, partly because this one allows much more light to come through than this stone here. But um, this one I'd call a nice medium blue, and this one here is definitely a cornflower blue. So I'll see. I'll put this one away. I'll show you one more stone here, but I'll show you another one. This is a cushion cut, it's a 1.83 carat. It's obviously a much smaller stone. B54, but it has really good color, good saturation, and it's actually setting a really nice ring. This ring has just got just under 300 diamonds set all the way around. A lot of detail went into this, all hand set. But this we regarded as a cornflower blue again. Even though the stone is much smaller, it still has good color with really nice saturation. And then we have down here. This is a six carat emerald cut. Emerald cut sapphires are really hard to find. It's one of the hardest cuts. Um, this is an exceptional stone. I would regard this one, I'll put it a little closer up, as almost between a royal to vivid blue. It's just got really good color. We originally had this bezel set, and then our jeweler reset this as a prong setting, just to allow more light to come through. But this is an exceptional sapphire. It's just got really good color, and you can see it's got sort of a diamond band there. It's raised halo, which allows for a wedding band to sit next to it. But yeah, this is a beautiful emerald cut. It's just got really nice sort of silks running through that stone. And this one actually has just gone up on our website for sale, but great sapphire. Now I'll just come down to the last one here. Now, even though this is a Sri Lankan sapphire, I would call this a flat blue. It's got nice color. I think it's a B64, so it's got strong tone, good saturation, but it doesn't have the same blues as the other sapphires I was selling or showing you. This is 7.06 carats, it's an untreated stone, but there's a huge difference in value. So we're wholesale, so a sapphire like this is seven carats, I think we have it for around about $10,000. Now, if this stone had this color here, it could be almost double that. So it really demonstrates that, you know, sapphires, the value is based mainly on color. I think 80% of the sapphire's value is on color. But whenever looking for a sapphire, always choose something which appeals to you. It's not what's the most valuable. Some people are like greens, or yellows and their blues. Some people like just pure blues. But always choose a stone which you you know you can live with. But I mean, this is a very nice sapphire. And it's a beautiful ring. It's a lot of details gone into this ring. You can see the diamonds that are around this. And for a seven carat sapphire, which is untreated for about $10,000, you get a lot of sapphire for your money here compared to say a 10 carat sapphire here, which is almost four times the price. And you can see here the stones kind of uh, size-wise look quite comparable, even though this is a long cushion and this is a classic cushion cut. But this has the color and that's where a rarity comes in. And obviously with that, the value. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful on, these are just a handful. We've got about 200 custom sapphire rings um, in our store. And this gives you an idea of just a tiny selection of color we have available. But anyway, if you have any questions, uh, contact us. We open seven days a week and there's always somebody 24 seven who can answer any questions you have. Hope you enjoyed watching this video and it's been helpful. Thank you for watching.